What is to be believed? The Protestant Dilemma. Hi, I am Ryan Zell. What is one to believe? This is the fundamental question that Protestants must answer. The answer to this question determines the beliefs and doctrines one holds as being true. Most Protestants would have us believe that all we are to believe is contained in the Bible. We addressed Sola Scriptura in the first of our Protestant Mythbuster series. The Bible alone becomes the sole authority with regards to matters pertaining to faith. The Bible becomes the final arbiter as to what is the correct belief. The basis for the doctrine of sola scriptura is the idea that scripture is perpicuous. Underlying is the notion that anyone who has the spirit can read and understand scripture. Everyone reads the Bible, thinks they have the spirit, finds their favorite verses, creates a theology, and a new Protestant denomination, cult, or sect is born. Hence the reason for disunity of belief within Protestantism. Everyone reads the Bible and comes to their own understanding of it. Protestants disagree on fundamental aspects of Christology and Trinitology. Is Christ divine? Is he human? Was Christ born of a virgin? Did he suffer, die, and resurrect? Is the Trinity true? Is Christ and the Father the same person? Who is the Holy Spirit? Many Protestants today are not Christians, denying in some form or another what is considered Orthodox Christology and Trinitology. Soon after the Reformers opened the floodgate, a deluge of new denominations, cults, and sects appeared on the scene. The doctrine of Sola Scriptura has led to disunity and heresy as Protestants today challenge core Orthodox doctrines on the basis of their own understanding of Scripture. The result of which is the existence of over 9,000 unique Protestant denominations, sects, and cults according to the World Christian Database maintained by the Protestant Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. Which of these are Protestant denominations, cults, or sects are guided by the Holy Spirit, as each one claims? If at all, only one can be true or none at all. No two contradictory notions can be simultaneously true, though both can be false. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. For when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will teach you all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but what things soever He shall hear, He shall speak, and the things that are to come, He shall show you. The Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion. For God is not the God of dissension, but of peace. So why is there such theological and doctrinal confusion in Protestantism? If it is the Holy Spirit which is giving understanding to the Protestants, he is suffering from confusion himself. That is, if we accept the Protestant narrative, which we do not. The Bible is not a person nor a living voice which can authoritatively teach and declare correct truth and belief and arbitrate as to what constitutes orthodox and heterodox beliefs. By what authority has one Protestant preacher over another to rebuke or chastise? After all, each claims to be guided by the Holy Spirit, and each has their favorite verses to offer as proof and substantiate their views. So why is there such theological and doctrinal confusion in Protestantism? That is, if we accept the Protestant narrative. Authority can never be a thing. It is a person. Every sport has a rule book, but none of the players consult the rule book when on the field where it counts. Rather, they have a referee who adjudicates during the game, who has the authority to make decisions on the field. Someone with the authority is always required to interpret the rules of the rule book. Is the Constitution of the United States of America the authority on what the Constitution of the United States says? Who then is the ultimate authority on the Constitution of the United States? It's the Supreme Court of the United States. Is there anything which is an authority which has authority over itself? I cannot think of one, can you? It is always a person or persons who has or given this authority. It is always a person or persons who have or are given authority as to the persons who give a living voice to the document. The Bible is a thing. It is not an authority over itself, nor can it adjudicate what judge right from wrong, moral from immoral, or good from evil. It cannot be because the Bible in and of itself does not have a living voice which can interpret and make a judgment. Who or what is the organizational person?
person in Protestantism who has that authority? The Bible itself? Or is it in reality you or your opinion of what the Bible says? Think about it. Christ did not leave us a rule book to follow. He left us a church. The church, not the Bible, is the pillar and groundwork of the faith. It is this church which has the authority to interpret the rule book which it wrote. What is this church which was left by Christ, which is called in Greek the Ecclesia? Ecclesia was the political assembly made of Athenian citizens, which made decisions in Athenian democracy. Let's look at Matthew 16, 17 to 19. Jesus answering said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind upon earth, it shall be bound also in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose upon earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. The Threefold Blessings of Christ Simon Barjona has been given a special blessing and revelation by the Father through the Holy Spirit and confirmed by Christ. Christ will build his church on Peter, against which the gates of hell will not prevail. Authority is given to Peter to bind and loosen, that is, to make the rules and judgments. What does this mean? There is going to be a visible church. This church will always exist. The evil will not prevail against her. Christ gives her authority through Peter to write the rules. Christ gives her authority through Peter to adjudicate. So the question is, what is to be believed? What the church says is to be believed. Not what any Protestant denomination, sect, or cult says, but that which the church founded by Christ says is to be believed. Does your church qualify as this church instituted by Christ? which has existed through history as a visible entity over which the evil one has not prevailed and which has the authority to make the rules and adjudicate? Do any Protestant denominations, cults, or sects qualify as being this ecclesia left by Christ? If so, which one? Not if your Protestant denomination, sect, or cult began sometime after the 16th century. This means that none of the Protestant denominations, cults, or sects qualify as being of that ecclesia, as Protestantism is the product of the 16th century Protestant Reformation. The only way you can claim that your Protestant denomination, sect, or cult is true is if Jesus Christ lied, or Jesus Christ had no knowledge of the future. If you believe that Christ spoke the truth and he was divine and knew the future, why are you still a Protestant?